Hi there, welcome back to my channel Scrap and Coffee. This video is the first part uh, tutorial for this album, the Waterfall album. Um, filming this tutorial ended up being a little bit of a disaster. Mainly the part where I wrap the chipboard with cardstock to make the cover. So I've decided to basically just cut it out of the video. The, I forgot, the video was a little bit too far zoomed in the camera and it's just kept auto focusing it was really annoying not very uh, comfortable watching it so i've decided to cut it out the tutorial will start with making the hinge for your page here if you want to have a more detailed instruction on how to wrap your cover i will have a link on top you can follow those instructions combined with the measurements that you find in the cutting guide for this album so i hope that will work out for you um yeah, I'm sorry, I think this is just the best way to go. So the tutorial will start with making this binding system. Okay, and there is our base cover. So my overlapping of paper will be on the back side. And now I can prepare the um, hinge, the binding system to go on the spine. Okay, for the binding system, I'm still kind of figuring out uh, what I need to do, but uh, I've got a piece of cardstock five and three quarters by eight and three quarters, and I am going to score. We only gonna need one inch. Score at two inches, and then I want to have seven eighths, so two and seven eighths, and three and three quarters. That's all. <laughs> And then I'm going to make a little mark uh, at two and three eighths. Yes, and at three and three eighths. And let's do that here as well. So at two and three eighths, and three and three eighths. Yes, that should be right. Super simple, turn it over to the bumpy side and I am going to apply double sided tape on one of the uh, 7 8 inch spaces. So I'm going to do two rows of 3 8 inch tape for that. Just make sure that you don't go over your score lines. So if you need to, you're going to overlap your tape. And burnish and then I'm going to fold on the middle score line so the score line in between those seven eight inch spaces just burnish that and then we can open it up and remove the tape backing and stick that down so at this moment while it's nice and flat I'm going to apply my tape on the folded side because that's going to be the hinge. So I'm going to stay close to my folded edge. And I have that little mark there that we've scored at the 2 and 3 eighths and 3 and 3 eighths. You want to stay above it. Make sure you don't go over your folded edge. And you do that on both sides. And burnish and we can also at this moment it's going to be really hard to see but i have that mark that we've scored that is where i'm going to put my scissors and angle it towards that folded edge and you do that on both sides so it's probably a little bit hard to see but find that score mark and angle and now that we've prepared all of that i'm going to pull back on the score line that we have not fold, folded on yet and give that a good burnish and you do that on the other side as well or you can basically just pull back on your hinge and give that a good burnish so there we go binding system done only one inch so getting the cover back in we are going to attach it where the hinge is going to be centered on your spine. Uh, so you can eyeball that if you want to, or you can make a little mark. You only have about yeah, a little under one eighth of an inch on top and bottom. Um, 
but let's tape this up. Uh, let me see, because I have some scrap pieces of covering my chipboard, let's use it. So these are the 8.5 uh, yeah, by 11 sheets. And it's the first time that I'm using them, but I really enjoyed it. It's super quick. And I was afraid that it was going to be hard to um, get them on, but it was actually pretty easy. So I think I am going to, because I'm just on the edge here, I'm going to pull that tape backing back here a little bit and overlap it with my other piece. See it's coming off a little bit. Okay, I need to put also an extra strip there. So I'm just overlapping my tape to secure that as best as I can. And now I'm going to give it a good burnish and then I'm going to add some quarter inch here along the bottom. Okay, give it all a good, good burnish. Get this out of the way. The cover back in so i'm thinking i'm going to make myself a little tick mark because i just know i'm going to mess it up if i don't and then i am going to regret it uh, five eighths of an inch is the center just a light tick mark okay so i'm going to make sure that the hinge is lined up with those tick marks and i'm going to center it top to bottom as best as i can Yes, so let's remove tape backing from one side. And add some wet glue. <laughs> let's just remove it all. What am I doing? Okay, I'm going to add some wet glue for some wiggle time. You don't want to if you, you don't need to if you don't want to. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> But I want to have some wiggle time where it doesn't stick right away. Okay. Sorry if my head is getting in frame. Okay, I think I did this about right. So I'm burnishing on the spine part and I'm going to burnish it in the gusset. You really want to break down those fibers to just really burnish that in there. And now I'm burnishing on the front cover. Is it the front cover? Yes. Okay, let's do the same thing on this side. Okay, that is in there. Okay, now optional, you can decide to clean up your inside of the cover you don't have to i always like to do that so i am going to cut myself two sheets of cardstock six and three quarters by eight and three quarters okay so i've prepared those pieces but uh, like i said they're optional and you really want to think about if you want to do it because we are going to make waterfall elements for both on the front and the back inside cover. So I already did one, but I'm going to show you the other one. Um, but once we've placed that, this is what we're going to get. So you only have about 3 eighths of an inch on both sides. Uh, that's going to show and you don't see any chipboard. It's just cardstock. But you are going to see a little bit more of your fold in the corner. So is it going to make a really big difference to place these down? Not really. Um, yeah, I'm just way too precise, so I'm going to place this. 
um, with a small strip of pattern paper on the outside. Um, but you really don't have to and it can make the difference between needing one pack of uh, solid cardstock or need to break into a second one. So uh, you might just not want to do this. <laughs> So I am going to place them because I just can't help myself and I've already cut and prepared the pieces anyway so I'm gonna do it. And with your pattern paper you will probably hide your folds as well so maybe what I'm trying to say is you don't need to do this. I always combine that with some wet glue for some wiggle time and I do my edges with the double sided tape. So I'm trying to line it up with the binding system basically because it has the same height. And then aim for that 1 8 inch border all around. And then give that a good burnish. one and let's do the other one okay so now my base cover is done i'm happy with this i just love this clean look and um so let's do this waterfall element first uh, so i'm going to do two right so one is going to be in the front cover inside cover one is going to be on the back inside cover it's called the waterfall uh, album so that's what it is we are going to make a waterfall for six by four photos that can fit in both ways so you can choose how you want to place your photo there so let me show you how i made that okay for the waterfall elements you are going to need, need to start with your pieces a and b so i already did one element so if you're gonna need to make both you need to double up the pieces that i'm using here but it will be in the cutting guide so i have one piece of a for one element and i have six pieces of b and uh, a is just a plain piece no scoring no tape and on piece b you did a half inch score line with tape on the dented side between your cut edge and your score line on the dented side and you're going to fold towards the bumpy side on all your pieces okay, we find the one with the letter yes so i am going to place my piece a sideways because that's the easiest way for me but it's actually this is the way that's going in the album and you can line up the six and a quarter inch side of your flaps with the six and a quarter inch side of your piece A. And we are going to attach our waterfall pieces on here. I always enjoy working with a base piece for my waterfall because it helps me with keeping a straight waterfall and lining everything up. So I am going to line up the edge here that's now on the bottom for me, the long edge. Yes, I am in frame. Sometimes I am too low. And with the edge here on my uh, what is it <laughs> left hand side and then carefully remove the tape backing and burnish that in place I have not tapered my half inches here I'm always in doubt if I will do it or not but I find that it if you don't do it it's a little easier to line up your pieces so again I'm placing my second piece I'm not just blindly bumping it up against my first piece against that half inch strip that's already there again I'm just having my eye on my edge here that's now on the bottom for me so I am removing my tape backing just a little bit and I am bumping up the corner here against that half inch and then align it along the cut edge and then I have it stuck down there a little bit because I'm quite confident that it's okay. But you can do a double check by putting your first flap over it and see if you lined up on the edges. Well, I am, but carefully make sure you don't move it. And now I'm carefully removing the rest of that tape backing and stick that in place. So this edge is my guideline actually. And I'm going to repeat this process for all my flaps.
Okay, I have one more flap to go and for this flap I will taper that half inch. So from my score line or actually just a little bit above it, I'm gonna cut with an angle towards that cut edge. And just repeat one more time that I have been doing. Okay, I'm just doing a little check now that I, not that I can do anything about it now, but I'm quite happy with how it all turned out. And I have about one eighth of an inch space here along the bottom. And now we are going to work with piece C. So on piece C you have two score lines. There is a one eighth inch gusset in between those score lines, which is pretty hard to see, I guess. Uh, but your tape is on the bumpy side. And I am going to taper that half inch. So from your first score line, you don't want to taper your gusset area. That needs to stay straight. And you're going to fold and burnish both those score lines. And it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. I'm just putting my nails in there, but I don't have a lot of nail on the mo in the moment. Okay, so what are we gonna do? I have opened up all my flaps and then on the bottom, which is now on my right hand side, but it's the bottom of the piece, I'm going to attach PC on the back side. I found that gave me the best result with my flaps meeting each other, but we can do a little try. So this is, you're gonna go up to the first half inch score line, bump it up against that score line where you can still see it. And then close all your flaps and this of course this moves because it's not stuck down yet. Carefully close it to see. What you don't want, if there is a little gap, that's fine. You don't want them to overlap, but this looks good for me. It should work, but you never know if we did something a little bit off with cutting or scoring or uh, your paper is not completely straight. All this room for error. So I'm lining it up top to bottom, bumping it up against that half inch score line where my gusset is still visible there. And then burnish it. And now we can really see because it's stuck down. Yes, so I have like a 1 16th of an inch gap there. And I rather have that than overlapping. And because I've attached it to the back, uh, you probably have that little bit of space there. So again, I'm opening up all my flaps to the top and get my piece D in. And what I did in my other piece is I made a little punch with my envelope punch board. That's optional, of course. You can also make a slit if you want to, or just leave it straight. I'm just going to find the center. This is seven and a quarter, so that will be three and five eighths of an inch. Yes, that looks good. Okay, punch that and then I have that there. And now I am going to miter my corner. So I'm going to cut with a 45 degree angle where my score lines meet. And the tape was on the dented side between the cut edge and the score line on the three sides with the score line. And once we've done that, we can fold and burnish towards the bumpy side. I don't know where my other bone folder is. It's probably underneath my stuff somewhere. Okay. okay, I'm making sure that my flaps don't overlap, but I'm good. So I can get this waterfall piece back in. And I'm going to place it basically along the cut edge, bottom cut edge of piece A, where I'm still able to see both score lines of piece C and that gusset and line it up on the sides. So I used to remove all the tape backing from a pocket and I no longer do that. I started doing it because I was making a lot of mistakes. 
and now I've added with that I try to make it a habit to put some tape over that half inch there because I actually never put pattern paper all the way to the bottom in a pocket because I like to save on pattern paper where I can uh, but that sometimes makes it a little bit difficult to get your photo mats in and this helps with uh, making that a little easier there we go, I thought what did I do wrong but it's, I had both flaps and now I can stick my sides down here so again I have both flaps and I try to align that along the edge and then in here again you can fit a full size photo with a background mat there okay so now you can think about your closure I am going to do a closure with circles and some twine that we're just going to wrap around to keep it in place you can use magnets you can do like in this collection you have the large circles well, let me see Ugh. like I've already cut into my first piece uh, but I think it's somewhere to the back oh it's not in the back like these circles so you could cut these out and make that your closure if you have something like that in your collection uh, with a magnet that you attach I would attach it I think I would attach it on the bottom like one third on the bottom and then have my magnet on the top flap for closing it that would be a really good option but um, yeah, I've already did one and I am going to make a closure with circles I've already used my circle die with a stitched edge to punch out some of the basic cardstock and then when I have some scraps I want to have something that pops off so something with the blue I'm going to wait until I have a good scrap for it then I'm going to use a one inch circle to go on there and then with some twine I'm going to close that up so I'm going to choose my pattern paper for this waterfall element I think I'm going to do this one on the front cover and then it's really hard because the images are really really large and I know I'm not gonna be able to get a full animal on here but I want to do the same thing as I did I really like the turtle but I'm not in love with this underneath there so I want to use it somewhere else I actually I'm thinking about using this one but I know it's a little bit over six inch um, I need about six inches and from nose to tail it is a little over six and a half so I need to cut off a little bit of the tail that is what it is okay let me just cut, get this paper and while I'm working with one paper collection you need to make decisions right you cannot use everything you have front and the back to your paper and once I choose to use this I am no longer able to choose this now this is quite calm paper so I'm not going to be too worried about it but I also try not to look at it too much because I'm just going to uh, be in doubt so what am I going to do? I think I'm going to cut the paper about one eighth of an inch from his nose or her nose. I'm not sure if it's a boy or a girl. Um, so that's what I'm going to start off with. Okay, so this is what I did now. And now I'm going to, maybe I'm going to do a little hair more. But I'm going to cut this paper to six inches. Um, yeah, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to do it. Okay, so this is what I have now. This is the piece that I'm going to use. And probably we can use these scraps or this beautiful flower somewhere. And this is also a great piece that I can still use, right? So I went the same way with the... Oh, I know it, but it's not coming to my... What it's called, but sea lion. Is that it? <laughs> I, I went in the same, with the same approach. So now I'm going to see like I need. This is eight and three quarters. So I need eight and a half. If I'm going to cut just straight from the top. I am going to end up just under it still. So that's actually pretty okay, right? Or do I want to cut off a slight hair. Like half an inch from the top. 
I think it doesn't really matter because if I have it now like this, so these are the decisions that I need to make. Yeah, I think this is fine because if I'm going to cut off here, I'm only going to get a smaller scrap piece here and it, it's not really going to do a whole big difference. It's not going to make a big difference. So eight and a half. Okay, let's do this different. I'm sorry. <laughs> the better way to go is to measure your top flap. We know that's six and a quarter. So I'm going to cut myself six inches from the top. Okay, that's my mat for the top piece here. And now measure the bottom flap, which should be about two and a half, I believe. Yes, so two and a quarter. And then this is quite a nice scrap piece there to use somewhere else. Or maybe on the inside of the flap. So there we go. I like that. And then I have a nice spot here and here to make my circles. That's pretty great actually. Okay. So let's ink these pieces. I was in doubt in what ink I was going to use, but I just chose my black suit to blend it in with the background, with the base cardstock. And the base cardstock that I'm using for this project is from the paper mill store. It's an 80 pound weight cardstock. And this one is called Midnight. And I kind of like it. It's a little um, less let me see this is the black from them and this is the midnight i don't know how well you can see that difference but it's a little lighter i kind of like it i used to order the charcoal from them but they don't have it anymore i'm not sure if this is the replacement of the charcoal or that they already had it this i'm not sure okay and i can glue this down So what you might want to do for this, um, if you do something like this, maybe a 1 8 inch border is too much to your liking for the continuous uh, pattern. So you might want to go for a smaller border. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing here and we're going to do our best to line it up. Okay, so I'm gonna do my closure later when I have a little bit more scraps to use. Come on, there you go. Uh, but here on the inside, we can place our photo mat. So if you want to, right? I use my cardstock for it because I want to show you the bulk that you create when you place a photo. Um, if you, I think if you want to make it with one paper pack, you really need to save your space on uh, pattern paper on these elements here. Because this is also going to take up paper, right? Um, so I did photo mat 6x4 with 80 pound weight cardstock, made them removable. And I uh, changed up the landscape and the portrait. Um, yeah, just did that in different ways. Uh, you can only do uh, portrait, you can only do landscape, that's totally up to you. So... If you want to, you can continue with your uh, photo mats and your pattern paper in here. I'm going to leave it for now. I will probably do my white photo mats in this uh, waterfall element before I continue. But in the next video, um, we will be making the, uh, the page for the album and decorate it. And then I'm going to use some scraps or maybe I need to cut into whole new sheets for decorating this because we also need to do this here right and i wanted to coordinate but let's see what we have left to work with before i'm going to continue um i want to do my my larger parts uh first 
I'm working on the decorating the waterfall right now and I thought let me show you what I did. I did the same thing basically for both the waterfall elements. So I've um, for putting paper next to my photo mats, I just looked into my scraps. What, are the, what do I have that I can use that is at least six by two inches? So I've cut up a lot of the scraps and I've used one completely 12 by 12 sheet. It is the one with on the front side you have the really large uh, lettering that says she seashore I believe and then on the back of it it's like this dark blue watercolor ocean with a mountain basically I guess so I've used that I've cut that one in half to 6 by 12 and then those 6 inch strips I cut to 2 inches so 6 by 2 and I just that gave me 12 strips that's this pattern sometimes I've used this side sometimes I've used the back side so I just went through my scraps and I've used one 12 by 12 sheet for it uh, I've cut, fuzzy cut it out all the animals from the back page to decorate it. I'm going to back that with black cardstock and then glue it down where it's not glued onto the photo. So I've already kind of gave myself an idea of what I want to use where, but I'm going to do that later. So here we are. And then on the back side, we have this really large part. So I already have some in the pocket here because I think I want to put the seal or the sea line I'm not sure what is what uh, on the pocket I think so I have my photo mat there to go it's hard to get it all in frame but um, I'm going to glue that one down with my removable glue stick so I can replace that for a photo if somewhere in the future I want to do that so I'm just placing it on here with a little bit of a border And then I, of course, I need to place my stamp. I cannot help myself. Finishing touch. And I, has, I, I, I like to use this ink for uh, stamping my image. This is Morning Mist. That's the name of the color. It's a little bit softer than the black and I like that. Um, okay, so now for this whole part, we're going to use one sheet. So in your paper collection, if you're using this paper collection, of course, uh, we have this sheet. On one side we have the large shell and then you also have one here down on the bottom. I've used that part on the other waterfall and this is the back of it. So again, I've cut it in half to 6 inches by 12 inches and now I'm going to use this whole sheet to cover up this part. So I'm gonna, I want to keep this completely, so I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to measure what I need. I already know the width is fine, it's 6 inches. So I all, I'm just going to measure every part. So the, here I'm going to cut 2 inches or a little under 2. I have my punch here which basically is going to mess up the overlapping of my pattern but there is not much going on here so I don't worry about it too much. On the other one I did have the seashell there but even with that it didn't really matter so let's start with cutting my first piece so that will go there and then here i need to measure that i'm going covering this completely so a little over that point so i think i will cut it to four and one eighth of an inch So just make sure there is no black showing there. Then for the pocket I will need for one 8 inch border two and a half. And I need to make that punch in there. And then for this bottom flap, if that is in frame here, I will need, I've got this down short here, so I need to carefully measure. It's just under two and a half. So you can cut it to two and a quarter, that will work. Maybe a little over, yeah, two and a quarter for one eight inch border. And then I have this little scrap piece left. So that worked out perfect as well. So for the punch here, I need to punch that on the center. So this is six inches, so I'm going to line up the edge with the three inch punch it and then that should work out there we go and that can go 
into the paper bin. So I can ink this and stick it down. And now I'm a little bit in doubt if I will place this one here because it will go, go over that seashell. It will also go over my notch. So I did that all for nothing, but I don't want it. If I place it like I can place it here, maybe. Oh, that's maybe a good spot. I'm going to think about it. I'm not sure yet. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to keep that in here for now. I'm going to close it. I have all those loose things in there. So I need to be a little bit careful. Okay. So I'm going to close it. And I will show you how to do the closure. Um, so I was going to do the one inch circles. I think I show it somewhere. Um, but then on the back sheet I found these rose buds that I fuzzy cut out so they were like this and I've packed them with some black cardstock and I thought they would actually make the perfect piece to use as a closure here and then I have I've used my circle dies to find one uh, or two that were close together but oh no one is a little larger than the other so from the larger one I cut out a black circle and then out of my pattern paper I've cut out a smaller blue circle so I etched, uh, inked the edges from this little circle and I'm going to just glue them on top of that black circle so that is prepared and then I have a little scrap piece of chipboard let me close this just a scrap piece of chipboard. I'm going to cut off a piece with some scissors that can do that. And then cut it in half. And I'm going to round this off a little bit. So you want this piece to be a little bit smaller than, in my case, these roses. And I like to have that no sharp edges on it. So I'm just going to make sure that this fits behind it with a nice border around. And that works. So I'm going to do the same thing for this one. It's giving it a little bit of a pop-up. Okay, and this should fit here as well. That should be fine. Yep. Okay, so then I have some uh, thread here. I just went with the black. I have several colors, but I, I could not find a different color that would really work. So black it is. And the one that's going on top, which eventually it doesn't really matter, I'm going to glue the thread on my chipboard. And this thread has a little bit of a waxed layer, so I'm always a little scared that it's going to come off. So I'm going to combine some wet glue to stick it on here, which basically works pretty well. I could also do this with fabric tag or something. And then I will also do some double sided tape. For some extra security. Remove that tape backing and fold in some of the overhang and then again with some more wet glue <laughs> I'm going to glue this behind that rose. So I need to think about the rose is going to be like this. My other closure piece will be centered. So I want my thread to come out in that way. Just hold that tight. So I'm going to let that dry for a second and then I will glue this chipboard piece on the back of that other rose. And then I will glue that one in place. So I'm just going to do this one a little bit centered. I just did it in a way that I'm not really interfering with the image on the paper too much. Okay, so. This one will go about there. So do the same thing.
And now I'm just going to wrap this carefully because it still needs to dry a little bit. Ideally you would wait a little longer. Okay, I want to have it about this long. And now we are going to glue the end of the thread on one of the circles. So here I'm going to just do the same thing. I'm using some wet glue. And then add some double sided tape. And some more wet glue of course. And then the other circle will go on top of that. Super simple. You can do this at the very as the very last thing. You don't need to go through your paper. Okay, so I'm still being a little bit careful, but I'm wrapping it around and there is our closure. So once all my elements are done, decorated. Um, we are going to put it in the cover.